collecting. Uh, it's the thrill of the chase. Most people who collect things don't just collect one thing. They are collectors of collections. They have multiple different collections. There are people that collect houses. Posters, rocks, video games. Video games, board games. Ornaments, stamps, coins. Spoons. Art. All different types of art. Hot Wheels. Old stuff, retro stuff, records. Shells. Marbles, Legos, pins, are going on a run. Clothing in general, of all types. My girlfriend, in fact, she thinks that she doesn't have a collection. Should see her closet. Hundreds and hundreds of clothes. Shoes. Shoes all day long. Shoe collection game is huge, where they never wear the shoe. They never even put it on, but they collect these high-end shoes. Dolls, Barbies. Every type of toy you could think of. Magazines, comic books. Cars. I've got a couple. Baseball cards, football cards, sports memorabilia. Hats. I might have an obsession with hats. I might have an obsession with jackets. I don't know. Movies. CDs, DVDs. Food. That's no joke. Cereal. Cereal boxes. I could literally go on for hours with this topic. Unicycles. My name is Gabriel Slatton, and I run Rogue Toys Salt Lake City. Uh, for me, uh, I collect a lot of stuff still. Um, I'm very much into G.I. Joe vintage stuff. Uh, very much into Power Rangers. Power Rangers was a huge part of my whole life. Um, literally, for 28 years, it, it, that show's been around. So for me, it's, I've grown up with it. Um, I'm very much into Star Wars vintage stuff. Uh, who really isn't into Star Wars? It's one of those addictions for many people. Um, a little bit of everything, in all honesty, when it comes to whatever, I, it can be a toy that's maybe even a $5 toy, but if it's something I had as a child, it just reaches out to me, and it's, it's, that's what it's about to me. The aesthetics of displaying vintage toys, it's kind of like a museum. Uh, my first collections uh, that I ever had were rocks, and uh, then when I was uh, you know, a young teenager, I got into stamp collecting. Um, and then my dad got me into coin collecting, so I have collections of for anywhere from skateboards to video games to stamps and coins and uh, movies and DVDs and, and, and everything else. I collect Disney items, um, mostly pins, but I also collect snow globes and you know little memorabilia from Disney, Disneyland, Disney World, all of the Disney. About 10 years ago, we were standing, sorry, we were standing in line for the Alice in Wonderland ride and some guy was talking to us. He's like, oh, where are you guys from? We're like from Utah. And he's like, do you guys pin trade or anything? And we're, I'm like, I don't know anything about pin trading. He's like, oh, and he explains the whole thing. And he says, well, anyone that comes to Disneyland from that far deserves a pin. So he gave us a pin and my kids were all excited about it. And so we went to the pin trading store and bought a bunch of pins to go trade. And it's just kind of taken off from there. And that was about 10 years ago. I mainly collect Hallmark ornaments or different ornaments um, for my tree for Christmas and I have collected stamps and also some coins. I started collecting ornaments probably like in the 70s. I wanted to start collecting them for my kids, get them an ornament that would remind them of something that they had did, done that year or um, just movies that they like or whatever and Hallmark happened to have quite a few of them. I have bought some from other places too once in a while. Every year I've gotten them for my children and then I've gotten them for my grandchildren now and my sister and and I finally ran out of room on my tree. Collecting to me is huge nostalgia. 
Um, as a kid, I played a game called Skylanders. Um, it's a Spyro game spinoff, and I loved it as a kid. I loved it from the beginning, the moment I got it. Um, I was experimenting with different games, and that one caught my eye. It was the first Toys to Life game, and um, ever since then, I, I loved it. I was obsessed with it, but obviously as I got older, as I got into middle school and, and high school, I kind of abandoned it, but once I graduated and and a little bit before then when we had kind of moved out of our old house, I got a huge wave of nostalgia and realized that I wanted to complete the collection because I had probably spent a couple thousand on the characters in the first place when I was younger. And so I thought I might as well complete the collection, get ones out of box, in box, whatever I can do. Um, and I think collecting to me is very important to happiness just because it, obviously it, it plays a part in life where I can have that thing to remember my childhood, that nostalgia. Um, I have something to always chase. For me, it's been a part of my life basically forever, really. Uh, I've been a collector myself. Um, I'm extremely into that, that vintage world. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, G.I. Joe and Star Wars and Transformers. For me, it was always, a lot of us feel like when we turn a certain age, 12 years old, you're supposed to ditch your toys and have a BMX bike and soccer balls and uh, but why? Yeah, you can do that, but don't forget who you are. And the toys are a big part of who we are. They're who made us who we are. And so, yeah, for me, it was just a gradual thing. Um, got involved with this company, doing work in Las Vegas in the music business. Um, one thing led to another, and here we are, with the store in Salt Lake City. When you go into nostalgia, this is a big thing with, like for example, I collect vintage video games. Now, I've been playing video games since I was a kid. A lot of them are video games that I've had since I was a kid. Old Atari games and old Nintendo games. But what's interesting is that uh, collecting, collector shops, I'll go in to talk to these people who own these, these hobby shops, and they say, you know our number one target for selling vintage toys is to men above the age of 45. They said 45 to 65 is our number one demographic for a collecting of toys. They'll remember that toy that they had that they lost. They'll remember that toy that they had that was broken. They'll remember that toy that they had that their friend took or borrowed and never gave back. Or, even more importantly, that toy that they could never get, that they always wanted, that their parents couldn't afford or that they couldn't afford. And like for me, I've looked up old toys. I used to collect G.I. Joes when I was a kid and I had this one G.I. Joe hovercraft and it could, it was like a Jeep type of thing and it would go, it could go off of land into water and float. G.I. Joe to the rescue. The G.I. Joe personnel carrier holds 28 members of the G.I. Joe team. It was one of the coolest toys to this day I've ever had. I don't know what ever happened to it, but I can't tell you how many times I've gone on eBay and looked it up. I went back and I bought all the old Star Wars toys that I had lost when I was a kid. IG-88 and all these, these funky little uh, Star Wars toys that I had as a kid. And so I think a lot of it is nostalgia. A lot of it is maybe the completion of psychology of things. As a kid, you get things that bring you joy, the toys, the, the games, whatever brings you joy. And you might lose that joy because it's a kid thing or you lose touch with it, you get out of it. But once you get older, you realize and you remember what brought you so much joy as a kid, and you almost want to relive that. I think nostalgia is huge for a lot of people. I know it's a big component in my life. I try to relive a lot of those happy moments and awesome experiences that I had as a child, and they're just as good now, if not better. Memories it brings you back to, you know, where you got it and what you were doing, that kind of stuff. And, and if someone, even if I have a pin that I don't particularly like, if someone gave that to me, it's a thoughtful thing and I keep that no matter what, because it's a memory and I remember, I, it's, it's funny that I remember most of them where I got them and the surroundings. And so it's just kind of like that uh, scrapbook in your head kind of thing. You know, you can always go back and remember where it came from and, you know, it's just something to look at and, and proud of, you know, people, you get people that will come in here and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And you get some, you know, or just kind of laugh a little and go, okay, you're a little crazy. But, you know, everyone collects their own thing. Everyone has their own ideas of what they like. It doesn't matter, you know, what it is. It could be something simple and it could be something 
you know, that you wouldn't expect people to collect. I had always collected little bits and bobs off of the street. I used to collect little metal things if I ever found screws and stuff. So I guess I was kind of into collecting at a young age. I always liked getting a collection of things and trying to complete the collection. So I naturally fell in love with that Skylanders collecting. I, I guess I didn't understand what it fully meant until I was older. Probably when I got into high school, when I started to realize, oh, you know, I have a collection of Skylanders. I do collect Skylanders. Um, I also collect pop figures, Fortnite pop figures, Destiny pop figures. Um, I collect books, video game books. I think what drew me to collect Hallmark ornaments is probably the Hallmark commercials. Hallmark presents Keepsake Ornaments for Christmas 1978. And Hallmark ornaments are just the gift for Christmas present to treasure a special event. They just, just the memories and the, and the family oriented and, and things like that. People don't realize how many pins there are. When you think they can't create another one, they create another one and it's amazing how they can just keep coming up with new ideas and new things to collect. So there's always something to collect. There's always a new one that you'll want. What drew me to collect in G.I. Joe, I guess, first and foremost. Um, first, uh, a lot of my family was military. I always idolized them. 82nd Airborne, Brothers of the Silk, as they say. And so it's been a part of my life forever and I'm very proud of that. And so that's probably what it was. You know, my uncle influenced me in that world. He was 82nd Airborne, as well as many others. And uh, that, I, to be honest, is what started it all for me. Um, then the cartoon, you know, watching the cartoon, it's, wow, this is so cute. Cool. Uh, and that was it. The characters, the science fiction, fiction aspect of it, as well as the modern military aspect, it was just super cool at that time. And it's... It's obviously been around now, what, 40 years or so that I think G.I. Joe's been around. Uh, the, the three and three quarters, which is the small ones for those of you out there. The 12 inch stuff was 1966, I believe, well before me. Uh, but even that stuff, the G.I. Joe history is, is awesome. It's the main thing that drew me in. Uh, my, yeah, people that collected back in the day, influences on my, my, my parents, for instance, um, they were really into antiques. Uh, like our house was beautiful. It was like glass cases like this with high end glass antiques. and. You know, my dad collected some of the toys of his childhood. He's in his mid-60s, so he was in the heyday of like the cool late 50s Howdy Doody stuff into the early G.I. Joe stuff. And so, I mean, he loves that. Lone Ranger. My mom was super into uh, crystals and rocks and, and high-end Tiffany glass and, and antique carnival glass. So, yeah, I was around it my whole life. So it was a very, you know... I mean, being a teenager and going to antique stores, I loved that stuff. You know, I'd get out of soccer practice or whatever and... And that's what I would do. I would just go lose myself in an antique store. Because to me, antique stores or this kind of store, it literally is truly, and I want people to think about this, it is the closest thing to time travel, by far. You can physically touch something that was, wow, this was a shaving kit from 1880 that's mint condition still in the box. It's so cool. Your imagination just goes, wow. So yeah, for me, it's been around my, my whole life. My stepdad would go to the store and get the quarters and he'd always bring me one because he knew I loved that. And my father-in-law would um, bring me a book of coins like the 1960, 60s or something, like a certain, a certain um, year span. And then he'd always leave one coin out for me to find. How collecting makes me feel. Um, it really does, it ties me into history and memories. I not to sound too, get too deep with it and sad, but I, I dealt with cancer six times. And so last time I was dealing with it, um, there was a toy store called BTNT and another spot, antique store called um, Cobwebs. That was my escape, you know, and this was five years ago almost, four or five years ago now. And I would go in there and buy toys from my childhood, specifically the G.I. Joe's where it started. And then it led to the Star Wars that my older brothers had that I could never have. And, and it just led to one thing to another, but it was that outlet. I could have just got out of treatment, walked in that store and forgot all about it because I touched a piece of plastic that just instantly triggered that, that brain wave. So those memories, I mean, it's, there's smells that do that. There's, there's so many things, but toys, it's an instant memory. I can't tell you how many times people walk in this store, for instance, and I hear it constantly that I had that as a kid. Oh, I wish my mom wouldn't have thrown this away. I've had all this, had that. So it's, yeah, it's that, again, back to that whole, it's an outlet, it's just, it completely takes you to a better place. So for me, it was medicine, literally medicine.
I think there's two or three reasons why people collect. And I think one of them is a very psychological thing, but it's the completion of something. It's running something to its completion. And in this life, a lot of times we feel incomplete about things or we can't quite finish something or we don't quite get done with things. And what collections do is they psychologically satisfy that part of us that you get to finish something and you get to complete something. And so almost like a puzzle. Collecting has gotten so big now that you have entire retail stores that dedicate a section to collectibles. GameStop has an entire section of collectibles where they have toys, anything that you could want for your collection. That's how big collecting has gotten. You don't find a retail store that doesn't have a collectible section. I mean, you could even argue and say that eBay is one of the largest places for collectibles. It really wasn't until the 50s, 60s, that generation, the baby boomer generation, that you really started seeing the toy world explode. I mean, because of the baby boom, essentially. And it was a little bit different um, priority for kids at that point. It all went back to nostalgia. It went back to eras. Another age group, guys that are now all of us, that are in our 30s into our early 40s, we are now collecting hardcore because those toys we had are now becoming a big collective thing. And so the more you grow up, the more nostalgia starts to mean more to you. I've gone through a lot of emotions collecting ornaments. I think sometimes, some years if I can't afford them, I feel so guilty getting them. But lately it's been so fun. It's, um, we wait for the book to come out. We wait, you know, pick them out and have everybody pick them out. It makes me happy. I love doing it and then I love looking at all their all the kids' trees and my tree with all the ornaments on it and and then when you're putting them up you remember you know why you got that one or why you know it's a movie that you liked or whatever but yeah it makes me excited happy but in the past it has made me a little anxious <laughs> like oh I should be buying those 82 through 94, that's where I go. I mean, the, the late 80s, early 90s was my childhood by far, into the mid 90s. And so for me, it's gonna be that stuff. Um, and my brothers played with a little bit older stuff. Um, and so, I, yeah, I like to pick like the Cobras. I'll get all of those. I'll get all the Joes. But yeah, I try to complete my collections. I am a completist, as my friends also say. So I complete certain things. I only buy complete figures, meaning all their accessories are there. Um, and then I'm a display collector. I don't do a lot of the carded. Carded meaning still in the package. Um, I do loose so I can display them and in cases and they look really pretty under certain light. The thing with Disney pins is that they're very sought after. And in the beginning that was hard for me because there were pins that I really wanted and it was so frustrating that I couldn't get them unless I wanted to pay a lot of money for them. So then I just had to change my mindset a little bit and go, look, you're not gonna be able to get every one that you want. If you get something, great. If you don't, you just let it go. You can't dwell on it. Because one, there's so many, you'll drive yourself crazy trying to collect them all. So you just kind of have to change your mindset a little bit and just know that you're not going to get everyone you want. And that's okay. There's, there's going to be thousands more eventually that'll come up with the same character or the same kind of pin. So. Uh, I think the rarity is the quantity of the item when it's made. Because for example, Right, this is a Halloween variant of a character. Uh, not a lot of this character was made. There is a normal variant of the character, which thousands, hundreds, who knows how many were made, but it's much more common. This one, much rarer, because potentially only a certain amount were made, and then they never made any more than that. But I think that's kind of good, because they're going to be more valuable if they were limited editions. And so, and it's kind of fun to go for the hunt of them, you know, to try to get them. I mean, I'll send, I have sent um, my daughters to different stores to make sure <laughs> we get what we were trying to get. So, and it's just been, it's really fun. And I think we look forward to it. And I guess it's not the end of the world if you don't get them, but it almost feels like it <laughs> when you're trying to get them, so. Monetizing collections or just collecting it. For me, it's a little bit of both. My, my grandfather was a very powerful businessman and he always taught me to only buy what appreciates a value. So my collection is kind of like that. I'll never, whether I ever sell it or not. There's a lot of guys that are total completists, which I do that as well, but they will, they want to complete like every 
He-Man ever made. You, I've got collectors that will buy every single carded figure that comes out brand new to literally put it in a bin and put it in storage just because they have it. So for me, uh, no, I'm not that guy. Uh, I, I think the end game for a lot of people though, it is really just that. Those guys have toy rooms and I have a 1990s and 80s toy room that my wife and I have. That's our era. And so, and it's all glass cases with this kind of stuff in it. And we just walk in there and it's like a museum. It's not, it's not cluttered, it's perfectly displayed, and you can just get your mind off of, of everything. So that's what it is to some people as well. So for me, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of that, a little bit of both. Um, I only buy stuff that appreciates, and I'm gonna buy it if it's the nostalgia you know, feel for me, my childhood. Most of that stuff is definitely getting worth money. Those of us in our 30s and 40s, we're old now. I know it's hard to say, but it's true. They're called antiques now. That means we're antiques, strange. The goal is to finish a collection, always, I think, with any collector, but I think deep down, you don't want to because it's something that you chase and it's hard to find another collection that you're as into. I mean, if I ever finish the Skylander collection, I don't know what I'll be as into collecting. I hope that I never finish because I hope that maybe on my deathbed, I finally get the last guy and then I can die happy. But, um, I definitely don't think the goal is to finish the collection. It's more of the experience of chasing that collection. There is a value on some of them. Some of them have gone up a lot in value. It seems like they at least keep their value of what you paid for them. But there are some that have gone up quite a bit. Um, I know there's um, cr the Christmas vacation ones. And I think that one of them, the last time I looked, and they're not that old. They've only been out for like the last 10 years or so, the ones we've been collecting. And I think there was one that was worth $200. And we probably spent maybe $19 on it. I think the internet has affected the collecting game in a negative and a positive way. I mean, obviously positively, it's so much easier to have access to what you're missing from the collection. Um, it's so much nicer to know what you're missing you can have apps and stuff that will show you what you have but as far as the negative goes you do have those scalpers who will buy all of them and then sell them overpriced you'll have uh, scarcity once again or you'll have where you can't get it but it's just out of your reach and you can see what you're missing and you know that it's out of your reach so I think that it ultimately is more positive because it allows more people to get into collecting jump into it because they can remember something from their childhood and be like oh you know I wonder if I can get that look it up and there it is they can get that, start that collection right then, which is awesome, even if it's super old. As far as the internet, I think that it's changed the collecting a lot because you can probably find things easier that you might not have in your collection. And on the internet, you can just put in what you're looking for and it usually comes up. Back when I was young, we didn't really have the stuff that you guys, you young kids have nowadays with all your digital, you know, footprint and everything. We didn't have, you know, to be able to play music, just go to the computer and download a song or whatever. We had to have a record or a CD, you know what I mean? Not even a CD, but. So I think for my generation and older generations, that's just kind of what you had. Growing up, we collected, you know, magazines with the rock bands that we liked and we'd always put them on our walls and stuff. And, you know, to us, that's, those are the good memories. And to like my niece, they're like, that's kind of dumb, why would you put, why would you put those pictures on your wall? Well, if that's all you had, you know, you didn't have the computers and the phones and everything that you could just pick a picture and, you know, you had to take your picture and wait two weeks to get it back from the store. How the digital age has changed collecting. For example, I collect music. I love music. I always had a massive CD collection and a massive cassette tape collection. Every time music comes out in a new format, I like to buy that, that music. Well, now that iTunes came out, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and iTunes started getting big, I could digitally download the newest album. The newest Weezer album would come out, and I didn't have to wait to go into the store to buy the album. I could just digitally download it. Like people with Apple Music, I guess they pay, what is it, $9 a month, and they can have access to any of the music they want, as long as they continue to pay that $9 a month. But when you stop, then what happens? It's all gone. Nothing left, you know, whereas I saw my CDs downstairs that I paid, you know, $10 for my CD. Oh, I still have it. I mean, I know it's silly, but it's it just seems to me that it's almost like a waste of money when you don't physically have it in your hands and you can keep up for whatever you need.
You talk to anyone who's ever owned a cassette or a CD and used to go in and buy a cassette and you'd unwrap it and you'd physically open it and you'd take out the cover and you'd read the lyrics to the songs and CDs would have pictures of the band in it and, and that physicalness of it, 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 just being tangible was awesome. You loved the smell and the look and the feel. And I notice people who collect books and read a lot love the same thing. They'll go, I don't want a digital book. I want the physical copy that I can smell the pages as they turn and, and the, the way the paper feels in my hands. Nowadays, the digital collecting, I'm really not that familiar with it, but that's probably what it's going to go to more than maybe the physical. I think I need the physical as far as myself. Fortnite, actually, my young kids, um, they uh, have a nickname for me. They call me Boomer. And so every time I say something to them, they'll say, oh, whatever, Boomer. And, and I'm like, what? I'm not a baby boomer. I'm too young to be a baby boomer. And I, but I get the connotation. It means that I'm old and I'm outdated and old school. But I see also my son who is 15 and he owns like 300 of these skins. And he'll say, dad, buy that one, buy that one. It's only 20 bucks. It's only 20 bucks. It's only 20 bucks. And I go, and every time I see him, he'll say that to me. And I think it's only 20 bucks in their mind. Once they keep adding it up, now they've spent hundreds and thousands with digital collecting because I think from music to even movies nowadays, you can digitally collect all the, all the movies that you want, or video games, I think, is one of the biggest things. It is scary to think about that digital future because the honest truth is that is where we're headed, and digital's not forever. I mean, obviously, as long as we're supporting it, pushing it, it'll be forever, but there's a lot of things, like, for example, I do, I never thought of it this way, but a game like Fortnite. I've spent thousands in Fortnite for their skins, and I guess you could consider that a collection. But it is scary to think that someday Fortnite could shut down their servers and all that's gone. And I don't have that remembrance of that collection at all. It's just gone. And that is super scary to think about. Granted though, it's still awesome. Like I said, I think the whole joy of collecting is doing the collecting itself, not completing it, not having it forever. It's actually going out and collecting. Cause I wouldn't, obviously I'd be devastated if I lost all my collections, but I wouldn't go back and take back all that money I spent to get those collections. Cause it was the most fun was when I got it. And I could appreciate that I had it. So I think collecting is, a, is different for so many people. It's like, for me, uh, collecting means um, memories. I want to look at something and remember something. In fact, if you think about it, why do we even have pictures on the wall? It's to look at something and remember something. Anything in our house is that way. Collections are no different. You know, things are a lot different now than they were when we were younger. And I just think that for my generation, it's still kind of just, I don't know, makes you feel young still. To watch the look on people's faces when they come in here and see objects from their childhood. Um, it really has become kind of a, an outlet for the people. And so they can come in here and get their mind off of the out, outside world, really, um, by simply buying a toy from their childhood. They can touch it and feel it and, and basically just forget it all just by simply touching that toy. That's what I, I love it. And that's, you know, what I've seen the most being here. I think that collecting is a big part of our lives and having something to always chase, even if it's something as small as like a toy. You know, anyone can collect and anyone can collect anything. And if someone says they don't collect, my guess is they probably just don't realize that they have a collection of something in their house.